A Place to Work From, The Civil Rights Movement by John Smythe Copyright 2014 Before 1954, segregation was permitted by the Supreme Court. The 14th Amendment 1868 reinforced the Emancipation Proclamation by saying, All persons are equal as citizens. States cannot make laws to limit basic citizen rights. All citizens are entitled to equal protection of the laws, including education. This Supreme Court, in Plessy v. Ferguson, 1896, said that states could impose segregation with separate but equal facilities, including segregation by race. This applied to every aspect of American life. Services, facilities, public accommodations, housing, medical care, education, employment, and transportation. In practice, separate was not equal. This is a story about assumed equal protection, would not. Teasing all, were the assumptions African Americans were ignorant and unable to study and learn like whites. Race divided very realistically because of prejudice. Years of discrimination quietly told everyone that prejudice was acceptable. The African American's attorney argued in 1954 that, inclusion gives children a better chance of living in democracy with the pressures of differences. Education is the entire process of developing and training the student's mental, physical and moral powers. And that separate but equal put the children's futures at risk. In Brown v. Board of Education, 1954, the court wrote, Segregation in public schools has a detrimental effect. The impact is greater when it has the sanction of the law, for the policy of separating is usually interpreted as denoting the inferiority of the segregated group. A sense of inferiority affects the motivation of a child to learn. Segregation with the sanction of law, therefore, has a tendency to retard the educational and mental development, and to deprive them of some of the benefits they would receive in an integrated school system. Inspired to know differently than Plessy, this court said, no, to more separate but equal. Patiently, separate but equal, as a life staining America's soul, would end for African Americans. In their ruling on Brown v. Board of Education, the court stated, we conclude that, in the field of public education, the doctrine of separate but equal has no place. Separate educational facilities are inherently unequal. The plaintiffs and others similarly situated for whom the actions have been brought are by reason of the segregation complained of, deprived of the equal protection of the laws guaranteed by the 14th Amendment. In 1954, the Supreme Court commanded to phase out segregation of the schools with all deliberate speed. The civil rights movement was citizen self-help, and woke lawmakers from a slumber. In a way, what began in 1954 will continue as long as minorities are unequally treated. Thurgood Marshall and Associates won the case. Some schools quickly integrated teachers, principals, and students. However, oases of peace were hard to find at that time. Little Rock Central High, Arkansas, 1957. Federal troops protect nine African American students going to school. After the school year was over, Little Rock closed its public school system. Loving participants of equal rights embraced this opportunity to end separate but equal. Others closed their schools, formed boycotts and started Christian schools to avoid the African Americans. African Americans had already begun to fight for their rights. The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, and others, directed efforts for change based on a non-violent approach. Whites slowly came alongside as success began to happen. Segregation would come to end in every aspect of American life, including, services, medical care, facilities, education, public accommodations, employment, housing, and transportation. 
The civil rights movement's progress can be measured by this calendar of events. All citizen actions are against Jim Crow laws and segregation based in separate but equal. 1955, Emmett Till murdered. Rosa Parks and Montgomery bus boycott. 1956, voter registration drives begin. Mississippi Democrats do not recognize African American delegates. Integration of Mississippi universities begins through 1965. 1957, Little Rock Central High School desegregation with federal troops. 1959, Robert Williams adds self-defense tactics to civil rights agenda, and rights Negroes with guns. Broadcasts Radio Free Dixie from Cuba to Eastern U.S. beginning 1962 through 1964. Ku Klux Klan bullies retreat when African Americans shoot back. Police repression and collusion with KKK continues. 1958, sit-ins begin to 1960. 1961, freedom rides of blacks and whites to desegregate the federal highway system. In Albany, Georgia, efforts to integrate a community by nonviolent protests and voter registration through 1962. 1963, Project C, the Birmingham campaign to protest segregation laws by sit-ins, marches on City Hall, and boycotts of city merchants are met with fire hoses and dogs, which were nationally televised. President Kennedy states, the events have so increased the cries for equality that no city or state or legislative body can prudently choose to ignore them. 1963 City riots begin in cities across the U.S., spawned by overly white makeup of police forces and unequal treatment. Harlem, Bedford-Stuyvesant, Philadelphia, and Baltimore are only a few. March on Washington is first collaborative march of all major civil rights groups, progressive wings of labor movement and other liberal organizations. 16th St. Baptist Church bombing in Birmingham, Alabama kills four young girls. 1964, Malcolm X joins the civil rights movement and advocates bullets or ballots. Civil Rights Act of 1964 establishes federal policy prohibiting racially segregated public accommodations and hiring discrimination. Three civil rights workers disappear during Mississippi Freedom Summer. Mississippi Democratic Party refuses elected African Americans at convention. Martin Luther King Jr. wins the Nobel Prize. 1965, Watts Riots. American Football League boycott of New Orleans for discriminatory practices. Selma voting rights movement resulted in death and televised police brutality. Voting Rights Act of 1965 is passed, and President Johnson says, but even if we pass this bill, the battle will not be over. What happened in Selma is part of a far larger movement which reaches into every section and state of America. It is the effort of American Negroes to secure for themselves the full blessings of American life. Their cause must be our cause too. Because it is not just Negroes, but really it is all of us, who must overcome the crippling legacy of bigotry and injustice, and we shall overcome. 1966 Black Panther Party formed as an African-American Socialist Party. Emphasizes Black Power and the Black Power Salute. Ends in 1982. 1967, Thurgood Marshall named as the first African-American Justice to the U.S. Supreme Court. Supreme Court holds in Loving v. Virginia that state statutes that prohibit interracial marriages are in violation of the 14th Amendment. 1968, Martin Luther King assassinated. Civil Rights Act of 1968 includes the Fair Housing Act prohibiting racially motivated housing segregation. Since 1954, a lot has changed for African Americans. By 1968, African American votes were having a significant impact on Southern politics. During the 1970s, African Americans were seeking and winning public offices in majority African American electoral districts and began to be well represented in media programming. African Americans have held high political and executive office positions for many years now. 
and Barack Obama was elected president in 2008. A continuing legacy of the civil rights movement of 1954 through 1968. Thanks to the civil rights work of African Americans, a roadmap has been laid for other minorities, such as the nonverbal autistic, and laws are passed. The presumption of incompetence due to race is replaced for nonverbal individuals with the assumption of incompetence due to inability to talk. As with race, years of discrimination quietly tell everyone that prejudice is acceptable. Nonverbal persons with autism want what African Americans have won, the right of presumed competence and inclusion. This is a right the nonverbal should be able to rely upon since under the 14th Amendment, all citizens are entitled to equal protection of the laws, especially in the area of education. We should not need to beg school officials for this. That we do not have this sadly seals our nation with more prejudice. That organizations work against us makes the intolerant as destructive as if they are racist. We are here and we are intelligent. We want to share in life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Our time will come. Brown says a presumption of competence is given each of us by our social contract. What is a fair standard to take away an African American child's right to life, education, and equal protection under the law? This same standard should apply to the nonverbal autistic. Anyone who questions the competence of a person who cannot speak for themselves risks denying that person's 14th Amendment rights. We nonverbal autistics learn as well as anyone. The old presumption believed about African American incompetence is as stinky and disgraceful when applied to us as it was when imagined for them. What is a standard to be applied by a professional who might deny a nonverbal individual's 14th Amendment right, his personhood, his humanity in the world of communication? The standard is absolute certainty based on medical real proof that the person's brain is permanently damaged. Never the opinion of someone paid to supervise an ability. Citizen action is another legacy of the civil rights movement. The Brown Court's 9-0 holding was really the death knell for separate but equal in every area of life, and ushered in successful citizen actions to end inherent inequality. Too often, the presumption of competence is a game played by teachers, school administrators and psychologists to babysit rather than to educate, patiently condemning an entire class of thinkers to an inferior class with their whims. We powerfully object to this dishonest segregation by overlords who also gave us eugenics and low IQ scores based on their own ignorance and faulty assumptions. We are also able to fight. This is a matter of personhood. A new front in the civil rights movement. Because of brown and African American self-help, others such as the nonverbal community can come alongside. Power now patiently resides in those people who will simply say, we are here and defy you to apply a lack of competence to our child. He or she is competent. Quality and wanting what each of us does is a function of walking with purpose. If who you are wants to deny those rights, you shouldn't be doing the job. You pitifully waste our time and expose your ignorance. Each one of us has a path that is available. When others deny that path by assuming incompetence, we need to report their denial to every state and local and federal resource who might help. Fear holy terror but not one already stealing our life away. Do this and build records for civil rights wars. The fight. The African Americans lead the way for all of us. Disability Rights Acts now complement the Civil Rights Acts of 1964 and 1968. We are simply not enforcing all abilities and privileges stolen by doctors and educators as we slumber in deep challenge rot anywhere where economics and time demands press us. We are really bullied in our weakness by awful, quiet, dastardly human hardness of heart. This must end. Meeting witness to intelligence with language all bureaucrats know as slogging to bury them is our single challenge. Patience was tearfully rewarded with lies and wasted time in my old school. The walk of parents there continues to be wasteful and sad. Really, 
Wealthy communities are by nature hierarchical and not given to recognize the 14th Amendment. After all, citizens of those communities really believe that he who has the gold gives the rights. From the movement, a civil rights lesson. A strong demonstration of the inequalities for nonverbal persons to federal authorities must be followed up with a request for a task force and supervision to help us accomplish our goals sooner than later. A law that imposes treble damages and attorney fees on violators. This may already exist. If it does, our class action is waiting. I suggest that psychologists, school corporations, doctors, and others who make up this web of deception and denial of rights are all equal conspirators, along with some speech and physical therapists. To me, this is a legacy of the civil rights movement and a debt of gratitude that nonverbal autistics owe to African Americans. Civil rights in the future. How this turns out for nonverbal autistics we know because we are intelligent. Eventually all will know. The only question is how many must suffer before we get there. Kind reality will quietly record the awful incompetence of walkers sacrificing the lives of others simply because they refuse the constitutionally granted presumption of inclusion. This awesome right comes from God and walkers' social contracts together. We need to reach out beyond what we sometimes see and start honoring it. Teaching inspired listening and learning is a task at hand. We are far from the end of the civil rights movement. Tasting its success will be sweet. Personal thoughts for the professionals. Why essential education is denied to the nonverbal makes no sense to me. Why the presumption of incompetence? Talking usually makes most people stupid in the first place. Real wisdom lives in the unspoken. Yet this is our path, to fight idiots, jousting windmills wastefully constructed by experts to enslave what walkers want, water from an imaginings expertly crafted about a condition they have never had, and only the autistic truly understand. Understanding the magnificent abilities of the human mind to absorb vast amounts of information and process it is not the strength of those who test another's intelligence based on concepts that originated during the time of Plessy versus Ferguson, necessarily shaping a hierarchical and paternalistic approach to anyone not like them or understood by them. The obligation to learn to communicate is absolutely critical to providing each person with equal protection. Taking lost time and isolation into account, the cruelty visited upon the nonverbal autistic population rivals that of Germany's concentration camps. Think about it. We shall overcome. 1954, Brown vs. Board. Separates not equal says the court. Rosa Parks is jailed, Emmett Till is killed, that was 1955. Little Rock Central High. Clan and bullies at night, voting rights must come to survive, freedom rides with whites, college, jobs and sports, we will come beside you. Martin Luther King, Brotherhood and Love, Civil Rights Act of 1964, oh, Malcolm X, Black Panthers, Bullets or Ballots, Voting Act of 65, King's Nobel Prize, Watts and Harlem Riots, I Have a Dream Speech, Civil Rights March, All Progressives Join, We Are Making Progress. Marshal to the Supreme Court. 1967, King has seen the mountain top, a bullet cuts him down, all the nation mourns, we shall overcome someday. Dedicated to the dignity of every voice, including the autistic nonverbal. John Smythe, 